All right, so hello everyone. Let me present for you all. All right, so uh, good morning, good evening, good anything. Uh, I don't know where uh, you are, uh, but it's my pleasure to present this uh, session about the Groovy Web Console. I'm uh, Guillaume Laforge. I'm one of the uh, co-founders of the Groovy Programming Language. Uh, which we uh, created in 2003, so that's uh, quite a bit a uh, long time ago, basically. Uh, I'm a committer and member of the PMC of the Apache Guru Project, and uh, in my professional life, uh, I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud. Uh, it's a little disclaimer, in a way, because I'm going to use some Google Cloud technologies for the, the Groovy web console. And you can follow me on Twitter at GDAForge. So for those few, perhaps there, there are a few in, in this room who don't know Groovy very well. So Groovy is a, an alternative language for the Java virtual machine, for the Java platform. A multifaceted language, as I like to call it. It started as a dynamic language, but it's got uh, static type checking, static compilation features. Uh, it looks pretty much like Java. Uh, as you know, so any Java developer is a, also a Groovy developer without really knowing it. And um, there's a little tool that I developed many years ago, like 10 years ago almost, uh, which is the Groovy Web Console, which is which allows Groovy developers to test Groovy scripts, Groovy snippets of code uh, live in the browser without having to download Groovy on their machine. And I'd like to do a little state of the union and um, tell you a bit more about this uh, this tool, what it does, and uh, what we could do uh, for the future of this tool. So the Groovy Web Console uh, is a kind of text editor to edit uh, snippets of Groovy code live on the web. So when you go to the to that the, the website, uh, you, you're greeted with it with this screen. So you can type some code there in the editor. You can click on the, uh, oh, well, it's after, after that. You can share scripts uh, with others. You can create a, provide a title, add tags, so you can have a look at uh, scripts uh, with along different themes, uh, if you use the taxonomy of tags. Uh, you can view the published scripts. And uh, you can edit, so you can write, you can try and click the execute button uh, to see what's uh, going to be returned. So if I just show you quickly what it looks like, uh, where is my Groovy console? So it's there, I can increase the font size a little bit. So I can do things as easy as uh, this. Hello, ApacheCon, print line ApacheCon, and I'm going to execute and you've got something in the output, uh, if I type, you know, 42, I'm going to have something in the results. Or if I have, uh, let's say, throw new uh, exception, boom, you're also going to get some uh, stack trace going on there, right? So it's very easy, and you can type your Groovy code away, try things, and see how it behaves, and, and see the, the the recent scripts and such. Right, so let's get back here. So it's, um, yeah, oh, you need to skip the animations. So it's a very handy tool to share code snippets with uh, friends, colleagues, other developers in your team. Uh, and it's also a useful language playground for experimenting with the language to learn about this new uh, AST transformation, about this new syntax construct, etc. So it's pretty, pretty neat. Currently, how it's implemented, it's actually a very small groovy web application, which is running on Google App Engine. I deep developed and deployed this uh, application on App Engine 
way before I joined Google, actually. So I've been a, a fan of the Google App Engine platform. And uh, what was funny was that in so when Google launched um, Google App Engine for Java, it actually pinged us, the Groovy team. So that was in 2009, I think. They pinged us to see if alternative languages like Groovy would run well on Google App Engine. And uh, the, the, the web console, my own blog, etc., are all apps that I've deployed and tested on uh, Google App Engine. And, it, and Groovy runs just very, very fine, very well on, on, on this platform. And um, because of all the, you know, the nice shortcuts via metaprogramming techniques, etc., cetera, uh, all the shortcuts that you can create with the Groovy programming language, uh, I actually ended up creating a small framework, a lightweight framework called Gaelic, uh, which is used by the Groovy web console or my own blog. Uh, a framework which is not really maintained very much anymore these days, but it, it, it does still work. Uh, but yeah, it would need a, a bit of an overhaul, I, I guess, as well. Uh, all the pages you've seen are created using Groovy templates. And yeah, it's hosted on App Engine, uh, running inside a kind of a sandbox uh, JVM, running on Java 8 and the new runtime, Java 11 runtime. And scripts, snippets of code are actually stored in a NoSQL database, uh, again on Google Cloud, called Cloud Data Store. And everything is on uh, GitHub. So if you had a look at the uh, the source code, where is it? There's a GitHub tab somewhere. And it's a very, it's, re it's really a small application. So like there's 80 lines of code and the, the rest is really, uh, well, the, there are a few things for like listing the recent scripts and that kind of stuff. But otherwise, the core functionality for executing Groovy snippets of code, that's really something uh, su super small. It's available on uh, Gila Forge Groovy Web Console, the, the old version at least. Um, right. So all fine. Uh, it works, etc. That's great. Uh, but what's the problem? Or actually, what are the problems with the current Groovy web console? There are actually multiple uh, problems. So first of all, as I said, I'm using the, uh, the Gaelic web framework, uh, which is pretty much uh, um, not up to date. Um, the, the versions of Groovy that are deployed are not necessarily up to date. So once in a while, uh, when I think about it, or if, if someone complains, I'm going to upload a new version uh, of Groovy. Uh, I don't know what's the actually the latest version which is currently deployed. So if I do uh, back to the console and if I type println groovy system dot version, the current version is an old 2.5.7, uh, which is, yeah, it's, it's pretty old. Um, so, and the version of the JDK is the one uh, provided by the underlying platform, the, the Google App Engine platform. So it's the latest version of JDK 11. So it's always pretty much up to date, but you don't have the choice. Say you want to use Java 8 or Java 14 or whichever JDK you want. No, you have to use the, the JDK 11 that is provided. Um, in terms of look and feel, you know, it's an, I was using the, the Yao UI library, so it doesn't look very fresh. And even the, um, the code editor, I was using a very old version of Code Mirror, which is a nice, very nice JavaScript uh, library for editing code. Uh, and it's also pretty out of date. And there, there were some, some bugs in, in, in that version, or at least in the way I integrated it. Uh, which made sometimes editing uh, a little bit painful. So it would be time to, you know, uh, do some cleanup and use more recent versions of those things. The the other aspects, uh, which are more about the developer experience, so there's nothing like uh, er error highlighting or uh, live syntax hints and things like that. Uh, there's no way to stream the output. So let's say you're doing a, a for loop 
and you sleep every second, but every second you're going to print something. You're going to wait for the end of the loop to, to see the output of this loop, the, the whole output and not just uh, one, two, three printed every second, for example. Uh, so it would be nice to have something that is more like a streaming fashion. Uh, the other thing that's missing, uh, if you're familiar with that, that's the at grab dependency mechanism. So in a Groovy script, you can say at grab uh, some library with the Apache Maven coordinates, and uh, it's going to download the, uh, in, instead of having a, a build file like Maven or a Gradle build file, you just have a Groovy script with a dedicated at grab annotation and it's going to say, okay, I need those libraries, those dependencies for my script to run. And it's going to fetch that automatically transparently. But within the Groovy web console, you couldn't use the at grab uh, annotation. There are other problems like once a script is saved, you can't edit it. You have to save another version of it. Uh, there are some situations where you do some metaprogramming tricks where the, the metaprogramming tricks done by another user could impact your own session on the Groovy web console. So it's quite rare um, because I did things correctly using a, a meta class registry listener and to roll back changes made to uh, meta classes. But well, that's a little bit of a trick. And well, there are all the things like, you no, know, if you want to several Groovy files, it's not possible. It's only a single Groovy file. Or uh, if there's some input that your script needs, uh, it has to be inside the script. It cannot be provided like through STD in or uh, any other mechanism. Uh, the other aspects of, um, as you saw in the screenshot, you can share scripts with your name, with tags, etc. Uh, but it's not real user management. So anybody can publish a script in the name of someone else. It's really just a tag, basically, a special, uh, a glorified kind of uh, tag. Uh, but the thing is that sometimes we also get people who post uh, spam scripts or scripts which are, uh, well, th there's no cut of content, to, but I, I should probably add a link, like uh, you shouldn't upload that kind of script. But I've seen uh, key generators for software implemented in Groovy shared on the Groovy web console. So on a regular basis, well, every day we'll, I'm, I'm checking all the scripts that are actually published to see if there's something weird that is published. But uh, I'd like to, at least people who publish scripts should, be, should own those scripts and I should be able to ban people who are posting things which are abusing the, the platform or which are not correct and which should, should not be, uh, be shared. Uh, also, another aspect. So, it, since it's running on App Engine, there's a free quota uh, on App Engine, so it doesn't cost me much. It's using mainly the the free quota. But if we are to create a new version of the Groovy Web Console, ideally, it shouldn't cost me uh, too much because that's coming from my my own money. Uh, so it's nice if we are able to uh, have a solution that is, that is pretty pretty cheap uh, for all the uh, the Groovy community to to use and take advantage of. Then uh, what else could we wish for? So that would be the icing on the cake. Um, what I've always well envisioned, or at least something that I wish the, the, the Groovy Web Console was doing uh, or was able to deliver, that would be to for the, the Groovy Web Console to be kind of learning platform so that uh, new users can learn about the language, its features, um, in a, you know, following a kind of a trail of lessons, potentially with quizzes and in a structured way. Uh, I'd love to be able to do that. So for example, by organizing the various scripts in a certain way, uh, that would be pretty cool. Uh, another thing which was kind of working with the this version of the, the web console, it's uh, you could embed uh, Groovy scripts elsewhere by, uh, with a special iframe pointing at the right place, but you couldn't uh, execute remotely. Uh, so that wasn't quite working. Well, it's never really been implemented though. Uh, so it would be nice if someone 
could just put like like the code pen uh, kind of tools for JavaScript, HTML, CSS. There are plenty of tools like these, which allow people to uh, embed um, JavaScript, HTML, CSS content on their own websites, blogs, etc. Uh, it would be cool if we could do something like this. What else? Uh, we could also use the Groovy Web Console as a kind of execution platform. For example, if you want to implement webhook handlers, like a, a GitHub commit hook, or an IFTTT for IoT kind of use cases, and you react to something that happens in the cloud, and then it executes a Groovy script that is hosted somewhere in the cloud. That would be pretty cool. And um, lately, especially uh, those past years with the advent of all, all the things around uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, we see more and more the, the usage of those uh, notebook platforms like uh, Apache Zeppelin or Jupyter Notebooks, etc. cetera. Um, uh, perhaps something like this, more like literate programming, where you have bits of text and prose and bits of code, uh, you know, interwoven somehow. Uh, it would be something pretty pretty cool. And last but not least, uh, having the platform auto-updated automatically each time uh, Paul King is deploying a new version of Groovy automatically, you'd have a new version uh, available on the Groovy web console. That would be uh, also pretty cool. So lots of inspiration coming from other language playgrounds, lo lots of ideas coming from uh, playgrounds from uh, like the, the Go language, Kotlin language, or many languages have such uh, different kind of playgrounds. I love the ones um, from the JavaScript world uh, like or Node world, like uh, Glitch, etc., cetera, or CodePen, which are pretty cool. There are also platforms like um, competitive programming kind of platforms, like Coding Game, they, they support Groovy. So there are games, programming games and competitions where developers can use Groovy. Uh, literate programming and notebooks. Books, I mentioned that. Um, so I'd like to see what um, we could pick from those solutions and put back into a, a nicer, more useful uh, Groovy web console that would be uh, good for all the Groovy developers and the, the Groovy community at large. So we could use uh, something like Apache Zeppelin or Jupyter Notebooks with the, the Beaker X kernel extension, which adds uh, Groovy support to Jupyter Notebooks. but uh, Groovy developers are perhaps not used to the notebooks approach, or uh, perhaps someone with a machine learning background are less familiar with the, the language playgrounds that are already available out there for other languages. So I, I'm not quite sure exactly what it should look like, but uh, I'm sure there are different things we should, in terms of inspiration, we, we could pick from all those um, platforms and approaches. So I've been doing some uh, experiments uh, since I work for Google. Um, I'm playing with the, the Google Cloud technologies in particular. <clears throat> uh, so there are different compute options available on Google Cloud. So you can, on Google Cloud, you can run VMs, you can run containers, you can run apps, functions, etc. There are different kinds of products which are available. So there's Google Compute Engine to run VMs. There's um, to uh, orchestrate lots of containers. You have Kubernetes Engine, GKE. Uh, if you're more in the uh, serverless world, which is the one I'm focusing the most, you can develop and deploy apps with Google App Engine. You can deploy functions with Cloud Functions. And you can, you can deploy containers with Google Cloud Run. Uh, so I wanted to see what I could use. Um, and I try different things. Uh, there, you can you could also mix those things together. So for example, uh, App Engine is really great for serving uh, static content as well as dynamic content. Um, but uh, the, the the current architecture, the, the current implementation of the Groovy Web Console had some limitations as well. Uh, so should I use App Engine? Should I use something else like for the front-end part, the executors, those that are running the Groovy script, perhaps uh, we should split both because potentially someone uh, running, uh, some, some Groovy script running in App Engine could impact uh, or hack the, uh, the built-in SQL database and 
wipe away all the scripts that have been stored. So currently, this is not possible, but we, we could imagine something like this. So it would be better to split like the executors from the uh, the front end. So I tried to um, think about something along those lines. So I experimented in particular those past few days with um, a front end that would be still hosted on Google App Engine. Uh, the front end, so that's really the part where the uh, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, uh, which talks to some back end and the back end the executors, the script executors, uh, implemented some using Google Cloud Functions. Uh, I think I had, yeah, I'll show that in the demo. Uh, with Google Cloud Functions, uh, the, the Java runtime for Google Cloud function, function is also using Java 11, just like App Engine for Java. So you don't actually have the choice of the JDK, but at least uh, I'm able to use uh, well, the latest version of the LTS, uh, the Java LTS, which is Java 11, and the very latest, um, most uh, up-to-date version of Java 11 uh, as a runtime. And on top of that, I can run any version of Groovy that I want, which is the case also with uh, App Engine. Um, so let me, well, I guess let me show you uh, what I've been working on. So, okay, let's move here. So the old Groovy web console was here. So let's have a look at the new one. Currently, it's just running locally on my machine, but I will deploy it on, on App Engine. So this is, uh, can perhaps increase the font size a little bit. So it's, uh, uh, the, the, the UI is probably not final. It will probably evolve. There will be some like uh, Groovy logo somewhere. I don't know. Uh, but something that I did, which is, so it, it's in the same vein as the old Groovy web console. So there's a place where you can edit your scripts. Uh, I didn't implement yet the feature of saving and browsing existing scripts, but that should be here when people click there. There will be the ability to log in so that uh, people really own their scripts, can edit their scripts and uh, I would have more control on who can or cannot save and execute script. There's still an output, a result, an error uh, tab here. And let's uh, start with something. So first of all, I'm still using the uh, code mirror library, the JavaScript library for editing code. Uh, but uh, there are some improvements already. For example, if I type like um, a, a parent, it's going to uh, insert the closing parents, or if I, uh, let's say, well, let, let me do uh, a string, it's going to uh, add the closing double quote, same thing with the single quotes, etc. So let's say I'm going to print uh, 42. And if I execute that, you're going to see, uh, hopefully, uh, the output, or is it in the notes in the, yeah, it's there, sorry, it's a bit slow. Sometimes there's a cold start because I haven't uh, executed anything uh, in, in an hour or so. Uh, I can select different versions of Groovy. So 3.06, that's the version that Paul um, uh, deployed uh, today. And he also deployed Groovy 4, but unfortunately there was a little quirk in the, in the release process. And the dependency is not yet available on uh, Maven Central. Uh, so I couldn't uh, deploy a new function using uh, a new uh, executor using th that version of uh, Groovy. Uh, so let me go back here. So in uh, other changes, uh, perhaps I can show you yeah, something I could show you in terms of developer experience using the, the code editor. So let's say I want, oh yeah, on something else. Also notice that, um, how the, the braces are highlighted. So the, it's in uh, green here. And if I move to like this uh, other one, the parents are becoming green. So that's also useful, but you can see as well the, the folding capability here. So I can click here to fold uh, the, the code. So if you've got a big script, that's, uh, that's handy. So if I want to do, so let me remove this one to 10. Each oops, uh, print line it. 
Uh, so it's going to print, uh, well, one to each, one to, uh, to 10, sorry. Uh, the thing that doesn't work yet, I'm not doing any streaming of the output, so I, I'll have to think about how to properly implement that. Uh, what else should I, oh yeah, something I'd like to show you. I think I'm going to pick up, uh, I think I have some requests somewhere. Yeah, I'm going to pick that bit of script. So the thing that wasn't working with the Groovy Web Console was using the app grab annotation. So I can say, okay, I want to use Apache Commons Math to use uh, the is prime function. Uh, I can say I import this and actually Groovy grab this dependency from Maven Central. And if I execute that, uh, it's going to fetch the dependency, so it takes a bit, a bit of time, the first time at least, it's going to fetch the dependency from Maven Central and it's going to tell me, okay, so 17 is prime, but uh, 18, so the next execution should be faster. Uh, it should because it should be downloaded already. Uh, this one is uh, false. So let's say uh, one more time just for the sake of showing that it's usually fast. Uh, I can use gram, so that's pretty cool. Uh, another thing uh, which is handy, so let's say I did some uh, typo. So you also have, uh, so you don't have like underlines in the console, in the, in the script, and the editor part. So I'll have to think about how uh, to do that, but I think it's possible with Code Mirror to add like little red squiggles on the line. Uh, another thing uh, that I can show you, yeah. Let's say I have, um, uh, I, let's say some uh, nested map, uh, something like this, see, 42, whatever. If I execute that, uh, the result is also, um, if, if it's a, so here I didn't print anything. It's really the output, the, the result of the script. It's a value. And it's actually uh, like pretty printed uh, as if it were, uh, it's because I'm using the, the, the JSON, um, the, the JSON support in, in Groovy and an object is uh, written as its uh, JSON representation. So for example, if I had a, or like a new exception, I think that's a, an example I had. So it would show the, the representation of the, the Java objects uh, underneath, uh, but serial, serialized as JSON basically. So it's nice to intros introspect uh, the, the result of a script. And let's say you wanted to see, you could also fold things uh, there. Uh, but for, for example, you wanted to see what it looks like with Groovy 2.5. You can also, you, you can't do a diff between two versions, but at least you'd be able to compare and see uh, what, what, what it gives. All right, what else? Uh, I think that's about it for what is currently working. Uh, in terms of editor, I think there were all the things I wanted to show you. Uh, I can quickly show you. Uh, so here, that's the the HTML and JavaScript uh, for the interface that you're seeing here. So I'm using lots of dependencies from the Code Mirror. So all this is the all the nice Code Mirror features are actually coming from some JavaScript libraries. And there's also a Groovy mode, uh, which is which uh, which adds the the syntax highlighting for the the Groovy language. Uh, font awesome for the nice icons, cut mirror, and yeah, Bulma. That's the the CSS uh, framework, and well, lots of HTML tags, and 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 here that's where. Well, I don't think I'm, I'll, I'll go into the details there, but um, what's interesting, that's here. So when someone click on the execute button, I'm actually going to call the API, which is hosted uh, on Google Cloud Functions. And the most interesting part is probably just to show you what it looks like in a Cloud Function. So the, the, the trick I did to support different versions of Groovy 
is that I deployed different functions, Google Cloud functions, using different versions of the Groovy library. So for example, if I look at the Groovy 306 version of, um, I'm going to look at the source, the Groovy uh, 306 versions of the Groovy runtime. Well, let's have a look what's in there. I'm fetching Groovy 306 plus the, the Cloud Functions uh, framework, IV, that's because I need to, uh, it's using Apache IV for fetching the dependencies for apps grab annotations. And I'm also using the, the Gmaven plugin for compiling uh, my Groovy code. And the Groovy, the function executor, looks pretty similar to the, the one that was uh, on App Engine before, but it's using the Cloud Functions um, framework under the hood. So it handles course requests, but here I'm doing some meta class registry tricks to avoid concurrent uh, request to mess up with the, the meta classes. Then here I'm using the, the Groovy shell. Perhaps I could increase the font, the font size because it's probably small on screen. The Groovy shell for evaluating and depending on uh, like if there are compilation errors, I'm going to output stuff from the uh, error tab. And yeah, that's basically it. And then I'm, I'm returning the, the, the output. So that's currently what I have. And um, let me come back here. So these are the versions that are deployed. Yes, that's what I needed to say. Yep, that's about it. So that's about uh, what time? Yeah, a few more minutes. Um, that's about it for the current demo. So I'll try to, in the coming weeks, uh, add more features, sharing capabilities, etc., cetera, um, to um, be up to speed with what the, the old Groovy web console was doing. I'd like to add some automation so that whenever there's a new version of Groovy that is uploaded, uh, I'd like it to be uh, to the, the new version to be to be available in the Groovy web console, and um, yeah, um, let's see where it's leading me and us. So it's really just the beginning. Uh, there's really lots of room for improvements, or perhaps you might have some ideas of things that you'd like to see. There are multiple approaches how you can how we can implement that. I used uh, functions. I could have used VMs or containers. That's also possible because we have some nice container images which are available on Docker Hub. Groovy images, for example, I could also follow the latest versions of the Groovy images, uh, container images that are provided on Docker Hub. There are many ways, uh, but I'm really looking forward to your feedback to see if you're using the Groovy web console, what kind of feature you, you're you know, looking for um in the groovy web console i'm really curious and interested in learning more about what you would like to see uh in the the groovy web console so thanks a lot for your attention and uh we can continue the discussion live here you can stop the sharing for now um so what do we have in terms of, yeah, Soren saying uh, we could use GitHub Gists or Gists, I never know how to say that, uh, as storage. Yeah, that's uh, that's an option as well. Uh, Narahari, uh, so the idea behind the Groovy, uh, the Google Cloud Groovy console, uh, well, it's hosted on Google Cloud, uh, but it's uh, somewhat irrelevant to the, the purpose of the Groovy web console, but really the Groovy web console is uh, for users to, as, I, as Paul said, uh, to experiment with the language, to share scripts with others, um, learn new things. Uh, sometimes uh, you come up with a, a bug. So is it a bug on your end or perhaps a bug in Groovy? Sometimes you can share that bug uh, on the Groovy web console or try it on the Groovy web console. That's uh, that's pretty pretty handy. What else? No other questions for now. Or perhaps what's the uh, the feature you'd like uh, to see? 
Is, so is the cloud functions restarting a JVM each time it runs? No. So sometimes you can see a cold start. Uh, so if there hasn't been many uh, invocations of a, an executor, uh, a cloud function, um, my Groovy executor cloud function, basically. Uh, so it can take more time uh, sometimes. Uh, but otherwise, if it's hot, so if I do another request right away, uh, it reuses the same uh, running instance of cloud function. So it's hot, it's available, and I don't need to uh, do anything, um, uh, anything special. So it's pretty much like uh, on App Engine currently. The, uh, the other difference is that there's no concurrent request. So if there were two users uh, doing concurrent requests, we wouldn't step over each other tools because there would be two instances of the cloud function executor. So it's uh, better for things like uh, avoiding meta class tricks or meta programming tricks that impact other users' uh, sessions. And um, yeah, so that's one option. I, I, I don't know if I'll uh, so keep just, on using cloud functions, but it's one more question there about GPAS. Yeah. That was that was my, oh, my question as well. Yeah, I haven't tried. I I should try. Um, ah, that would be cool because it it should work because since Grab works, mm -hmm. uh, I don't think there's anything preventing um, GPAS usage. I mean. You can spawn threads and all that kind of things. So it should work. I'll, I'll have to try it out and see if it works well. But GPRS should, should work, I think. Uh, if someone does system exit zero or system exit something, uh, yeah, I think it might start a new instance. That's possible. I'll have to try that as well. Yeah, lots of ideas of things I can try. GPRS <laughs> system exit, which is nasty. Uh, but yeah. Good question. I'll double check what's the behavior. Okay, thank, um, I think we've got to wrap up soon, Guillaume. Yep. So thanks very much for that talk. That was very exciting. It would be um, certainly good to see a new version of uh, the Groove console out at some point in time. So yep. we all have to um, see how far you get and then see if we need to give you a hand to uh, help push it across the line. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Kim. Thank you. Great talk. Thank you.